Last time, Lantern said, we'd left you as we just entered the harbour at Salcombe, passing the beautiful wooden barge as it sailed out over the bar. That afternoon, we took the dinghy into town and stocked up on provisions. It was a beautiful, beautiful evening. And after a little while, well, we couldn't help ourselves. We had to crack open a gin and tonic. Southam has some really fine beaches all along the inlet. They're child friendly and some of them are even dog friendly. It's a great place. Go there if you get the chance. We settled in for the evening and both read a book before going to bed. We got up early the next morning at 7 and made our way out over the bar with about 300 mil under the keel. We worked our way down to the River Yell. There was going to be some bad weather coming in and we wanted to go somewhere that was really sheltered, possibly for two nights. We love a river yell, but again, it's a really tricky entrance. Very shallow and there's a sandbar, but once you get inside, it's really sheltered and a great place to just chill out and relax. As you can see in the photo, it's really sheltered inside the harbour, and despite it blowing 35 knots out at sea, the water was calm and the tide was falling away. We met the harbour master, had a bit of banter and then settled down to watch the sun slowly setting in the west. And later that evening we decided to open up the cellar before turning in for the night. After a slightly later start, we made our way south to southwest, out round the headlands, and further down the coast. Quite a long passage this time into a nice sheltered anchorage that we know really well. Once safely anchored in St Moors, we took the dinghy across the shore, had a wander round spot a lunch and then walked up to the castle. There's a bit of history scrolling past and a link to the website. Before we knew where we were it was time to go back to the boat and head to bed. The next day's sailing was going to be quite a long one and some quite rough passages as we went round the headlands, especially the lizard the lizard is the most southerly part in England. There's lots of wrecks and hidden rocks and overfalls when the tide is ebbing and flowing. You need to do some proper passage planning when traversing around these headlands. The water really can get quite rough at times, especially on a spring tide. Well, here's where we were off to. The fishing village of Newlyn in Cornwall. Again, it can be a bit shallow, but it's a real nice place to stay. Newlin is a busy fishing harbour. There are a few visitors' moorings but it is always advisable to book ahead. There's a large fish market, a big slipway and boat yards. When you've had a few Guinnesses, you fill of fish and chips, you can make your way back to the boat. It's really peaceful. We left early the next morning 
in beautiful sunshine. There were a few squalls and the sea was still a bit lumpy, but the wind was in the right direction, so we just put the Jinnah up and made our way further west. The wind started to pick up a bit and it clouded over, but it wasn't for long. In a few hours, it was land home and we'd made it. The beautiful Scilly Isles, and they really are beautiful. White coral sand beaches, deep blue water and stunning anchorages. We spent a few days in the same bay and a couple of days on our fold up bikes cycling around the islands. They're absolutely gorgeous. You've got to go there. Next time on Ant and Sid Sailing, we'll tell you about the long journey back. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe or give us some comments. Bye. Bye.